Hey, what's up? Steve here. It's been a while. How are you? Good to see you. Well, I'm back to make another video to talk about the reasons why I prefer using Capture One over Lightroom. If you haven't seen that previous video, check the description. Today, we're talking about color. So let's dive in. All right, so I've put together a group of images. I'll be doing mostly talking about Capture One because that's what I prefer, but I will share a little bit of comparison with Lightroom. The whole idea behind this is that if you're maybe considering looking at Capture One or just interested in Capture One in general, that maybe you might look at this and go, huh, Capture One, cool, I'll check it out. And if you wanted to, there's a free trial. Just download it, import some images, and start playing with it. First and foremost, right off the bat, the render engine, right? The way that it reproduces color just looks better to my eye. And this is where I want to show you a direct comparison. Now, again, I encourage you to take your own images, import them, and make that comparison. Here's one image that I'm looking at. This is straight out of camera. If I do Command R in Capture One, that resets all adjustments, so nothing is being applied to this. This is how the shot looked. This was shot with a Canon EOS R5. But let's take a look at this same image in Lightroom. So here it is. And this is in the develop module specifically. So if I hit the E key and go over to the loop module or the library, right, loop view, and this is actually giving me the embedded preview and then I'll hit D to go back to develop. You see, I don't know if it's translating for you, but it's definitely adding. So right here, I like this. This is nicer, warmer skin tones. And then when I hit D, it's giving me some green stuff. Mm, not really into that. When I head over to capture one, this looks really nice right off the bat. Um, again, here's Lightroom, Capture One. There's a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturation here, like right out of the gate. I don't have to do too, too much to this image. But let's talk about if we wanted to play around with some of those things. What are the sliders? What are my options? Cool. So in this color tab up here at the top, and just quick little tip for you, if you're used to having all of your stuff on the right hand side like you are in Lightroom over here in the develop module. Well, what's really neat about Capture One is the customization. Don't worry, I'm making a video on that later, but really quickly, Command Shift T pops everything over on the right hand side. I prefer it on the left. I'm more of a default Capture One user. Command Shift T brings everything back where I'm used to seeing it. Now, in this color tab up here at the top, you can kind of think of them as Lightroom as it has modules. I have my base characteristics and then I pop over to white balance as you would. Um, and then my color editor. So in here, this has three settings. Now, normally Lightroom would only have what you would see here. And what's interesting is Lightroom, I noticed now if you go over here to color, this is basically the same view as what you would have over here in the basic module. And if you want to, you can go to HSL and kind of have everything broken out so you can start manipulating with multiple colors at once. But here in Capture One, I could select on a specific color like the green or maybe the yellow, and I could start sliding this around and manipulating, in this case, the majority of the grass and a little bit of the trees. I'm gonna undo that. What's also cool is it has this uh, target selection tool or they're calling it a direct color editor. What's cool about this tool is if I click over here on the grass, as you'd imagine, I can click and start dragging. And what I'm doing by dragging up is I'm increasing the saturation of that color that I've targeted. If I drag to the left, I'm actually adjusting the hue to the left and I'm still holding the whole time. If I drag to the right, I'm adjusting the hue to the right. If I hold the option key, and drag up, I'm increasing the lightness. So just from clicking and dragging, I could adjust all of these things. I can get it where I want it and maybe say, you know, maybe I want my luminance down a little bit. Maybe I want it like that. Something pretty obvious, but I just wanna make sure that you know that it's there. So over here in his sweatshirt, if I wanna click and drag and start decreasing the saturation, cause maybe it's got a little bit too much purple blue in there. We could pull that down. Maybe I wanna click and drag on his sweats here and maybe move those over a little bit, not too, too much, something like that. So you could click on the individual colors and make your adjustments, or you could use this target adjustment here. And what's neat is if you click over here, this actually lets you customize how that target selection works, um, the sensitivity of it, and that what the adjustments are. So if you prefer to drag up and down for saturation um, or left and right for hue, whatever you prefer. Now. This is where Capture One separates itself from Lightroom because you have two more panels here. You have Advanced and you have Skin Tone. We're gonna to talk about Skin Tone in an entirely different video, so don't worry about that yet. But the fact that it has its own panel says something there. Let's talk about Advanced. This allows you to target select a color. So let's maybe do the green again. Let's do the green grass. 
And now what it's done is it's shown me on a range here, I have a few sliders, but right here it's shown me the selection that I've just made. And if I want to, I can further refine that selection by adjusting the parameters up here. But first what I wanna do is I wanna isolate it. I basically, I'm making a color mask, right? This is probably the easiest way to think about it. And Lightroom has something similar, but in my opinion, not as powerful as what Capture One has because it's just not visual like this. So if I want to make these adjustments here, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check on this box right here. It says view selected color range. Basically show me what I've selected, nothing else. Gray everything else out. So again, for me, this is very helpful to see because now I can see, okay, yeah, I am picking up some yellows. I'm even picking up a little bit of oranges here. So maybe I wanna start removing some of those oranges by dragging this out. And now I know I'm really not affecting the trees. And notice there are hard lines here that show you the selection. The smoothness is that feathering edge to really show, do I want it to you know, smooth out a little bit? Do I want a little bit of that feathered selection or do I want it to be a really hard stop just the green, nothing else. So I'll give it a little bit so it kind of smooths all that out. And then if I wanted to, I could adjust this slider in and out to target, do I want more of those highlights or less of those highlights? In this case, I'll say, yeah, give me some of those highlights. And then here, some more of those darker saturated tones or less of them. And in this case, everything's kind of fallen in this, this mid range for the most part. And even if I wanted to, I could just drag this around and you could see I could just start figuring out whatever I'd want to select. So it's, it's a pretty powerful visual tool in my opinion, and that's really why I like it. But here we are on our greens, and then I can uncheck this box down here. And then now what I can do is I can start moving this hue around and let's just make it look crazy because why not? And desaturate that, great. Well now let me go ahead and click on his neck over here. And you can see what I've done is I've just added another color mask. So here's my greens. And then now here are my oranges. So I've targeted these oranges and maybe I want to, oh, I don't know. Let's actually uh, make that selection. And now we can see, do I want some of those yellows? Maybe not so much. Let's just do this. The adjustments I'm making right now don't really matter so much. I just wanna show you those abilities and let's maybe desaturate that somewhat and maybe make it a little brighter. And this is cool because I could turn these on and off and just see those adjustments. So this is independent from anything that would be done in the basic slider, because if I want to, I could reset these adjustments. And you do so a little bit different than you do in Lightroom. When you click and hold on the title, we'll show you a before and after of the adjustment that you've made. Normally in Lightroom, you double click and it resets it. Well, if you double click on the slider itself, that will actually reset it back to zero. So I'm gonna reset all of these other adjustments here. Now, the other thing that you can do within this panel itself is you can actually reset the entire panel. And if you wanna see a before and after of that panel, you would hold the option key. If I hold the option key and click on this arrow, it'll show me before, and then if I let go, it'll show me after. Then if I click once on that arrow, it will remove all of those settings. Okay, cool, so that's the color editor panel. Now again, I said I'm gonna make a whole other video just talking about skin tone, because it really, really, really is powerful. But I would again encourage you to, to download a trial, come in here, click and play around, and just see what it's capable of, because this for me is one of the things, if you are a portrait photographer, you want Capture One for this tool alone. I said it. You could do stuff in Lightroom, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. It's not the same. Wait for the video, you'll see it. So definitely make sure you're subscribed, so that way you don't miss when that video comes out. Okay, so let's, um, let's select another image. Let's grab uh, this one over here. Now, in here, I've already made some adjustments, so I'm gonna show you a quick before and after. Before and after. So you can see what I've done is I've applied some color grading here. I've also completely shifted the color of his pants and uh, just overall, just some basic adjustments that I've made. So I'm gonna uncheck, in this case I'm utilizing layers. Now I also plan to make an entire video just talking about the layers, but just know that Capture One has layers. And any of these color adjustments, you can apply directly to any layer. So I'm just gonna turn these off. And let's just call this, I'm gonna double click on here, um, base adjust. boost adjust because the base adjustment is if I click on this we will see underneath the advanced tab I utilize the ability to target this blue right in here 
And if I click on the view selected color range, you'll see that it's basically just showing me his pants. And then what I did was I moved the hue all the way over. And it wasn't enough. It started to move it a little bit more towards a tealish color, but it wasn't enough to really get it to the green that I want because I wanted to match a little bit more of the yoga mat and the product itself. So I just made another adjustment layer and went over to basic. And then in here, I took any of those remaining blues and pushed them all the way over. Now, again, this is one way that you could do it. You could do it a couple of different ways. I could have made another color mask and started moving all of that over again. Uh, I could have also made some of those adjustments on this base background layer, which in this case, I made a little bit, but nothing too, too tremendous. So the ability to stack and put these layers on top of one another, for me is really powerful with color. And it allows you to, in this case, very cleanly shift pants from blue to green, no problem. All right, so let's dive into another image here and let's talk about the color balance. Now, this is the one thing that Lightroom has had for a while. And if I'm honest, Lightroom gives you a little bit more power, um, mainly because what they have is that balance slider. So that balance slider, if you're not familiar, let's come over and let's just click on this image here. Oh yeah, this is it out of camera, by the way. But if we come down over here to this color grading, and if I select on any one of these and I start making adjustments, I have not only balance, but I also have blending. Uh, so there is a little bit more power there where you can start to lean a little bit more into your shadow tones, your mid tones, or your highlight tones. And I like that Lightroom has that, I, I will say that. But in the experience and the practice that I have with using Capture One or specifically with color balance, it's really not much of an issue because you still have control because you have layers and you can utilize things like um, luminosity masks very easily. So let's do that on this image here, okay? Let's just give this a sort of standard color grade which would be a bit of a, maybe we've got some kind of teals over here in the highlights for some nice skin. And let's go to our midtones. Let's warm those up a little bit there. Let's come over here, boost those slightly. And you'll see what it does is it actually gives me these little sliders here on the side. So this is my increase of saturation. So it's really easy to just go up in saturation. And then also this is now targeting the luminosity of just my midtones. But now let's move our shadows over here, maybe move them into a bit more of like a tealish blue, something like that. So now again, if I wanna see a before and after of the color balance, I'm gonna hold option, click on this little curved arrow, here's before and after. Not a whole lot, right? Let's just boost it just so we can really see what's happening. Let's do this with our midtones. Let's really go up on our highlights like this and then our shadows here. So you can go in there and make a uh, color grade. So I'm gonna do a before and after. All right, now let's say that color grade that I just did was a bit too much and I wanna dial it back a little bit. Well, I can't really do that without going through to each one of these selectively. But if I save it as a preset first, go over here to my hamburger, save custom preset. Let's call this preset example, all caps there. Let's hit save, good. Now, if I come up here and make a new layer, and then on this adjustment layer, I come back to my color balance. Because I have the adjustment layer, let's just go ahead and call this grade. And because I have my adjustment layer selected, I can come over here, I can select on my preset example. Okay, we've named it grade, but nothing happened. Well, by default, what happens with Capture One is it actually gives you a layer. If I click and hold here, it gives you an empty layer. So if we make a new filled adjustment layer, that will fill it first. Let's actually call this grade. We're gonna delete the one below it. And then now that this is filled and we come back over here to this preset, preset example, there it is. And then now what I can do on this grade layer is I can actually just kind of roll back that opacity. Maybe it's somewhere 60, 70, something like that. The last thing that I wanna show you here with color is the ability for you to make these color masks into selections very quickly. So I'm gonna come back over here to the background layer. I'm gonna turn off the grade for now and I'm gonna come over to the advanced tool. I'm gonna to grab this target adjustment. Let's grab the, let's say we grab her outfit and I'm going to say view anything else let's get rid of all of that and let's actually see how far we can extend 
I don't want to get any from uh, painting. We're going to reduce the smoothness here. Good. That's looking pretty good. And then what I can do is come up over here and I can say create masked layer from selection. So what this is doing is it's making a color mask, not only for my manipulation with color, because here you can see I have limited tools, right? I only have uh, hue, saturation, and lightness. But what, what if I wanted to do a color grade on just her outfit? Well, now what I can do is create mask layer from selection. It's gonna take a second to do this. And now I have this, I'm gonna call this outfit. And on outfit, what I could do is I could go through and say, let's just grab that same preset that we made over here, color balance, grab this preset example. And now I've applied a color grade to just her outfit. Well, also it looks like it picked up on some of the mat and a tiny bit of the green grass. So I hope that was helpful for you to see. Uh, again, I want to just talk about a couple of things that I use on a fairly regular basis. There's so many things that make Capture One really powerful, especially when it comes to color. Uh, we could really dive into a whole bunch of stuff, but the customization, the ability for you to make these quick selections. And again, that advanced tab is huge along with the skin tone. Skin tones coming next. Don't worry. So if you do have any thoughts, comments, questions, feedback, please let me know. Make sure you hit the bell, get notified, subscribe so that, that way you don't miss the future episodes. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.